the forehead of your robot. Ever since I saw that godforsaken episode, I haven't been the same. My parents got arrested because of my brother being missing. Granted, the police did find my little brother, but unfortunately he hasn't been found alive. What's ironic is that he was found dead in the forest, with his guts thrown all over the place. And it seems that his corpse was eaten by some animal. My parents are the ones who were accused of his murder. They were released after they found out it wasn't them who killed my brother. Instead, it was the guy who made the episode that Ben mentioned to me on his reply back to me on Gmail. From what I heard, the guy who killed my brother was caught and put in jail waiting for his trial. My parents were distraught and never the same after the events. Not that I blame them of course. But they have become a lot more distant towards me. They won't even pick up the phone when I call them. Hell even when I try to visit their house, they immediately tell me to leave. I have tried to help them but they shut my suggestions down. I don't even know what to do with them anymore. I give up trying to help them since they obviously don't want it. I decided to watch Adult Swim on a Friday night, just to watch an episode of Family Guy. I did get over the horrible incident since it was six years ago. But that was until I saw a bumper, saying that a rerun of the amazing world of Gumbo was coming up next. So I decided to record the episode, hoping that it was a rerun of that disturbing Gumbo episode, so that I can write up a transcript for the episode. Just as I remembered, the intro played but it looked more like the prototype intro, used in the original episode. Afterwards it cut to the title card that said, The Grieving, I knew what I was getting myself into, so I put the episode on pause, and went to grab my laptop to type a transcript of the episode for evidence. I then pushed play and turned on closed captions, so I can have a better time understanding what they are saying, and type it into the transcript. The episode starts off just how I remembered, it cut to Gumball's school, Elmore Jr. High, with Gumball sitting in a corner of his classroom. It's so boring in this classroom without my good buddy Darwin to keep me company. I don't even know what I did to deserve being in this classroom for such a long period of time. Where is Darwin anyway? It's not like him not to be here by my side. Whatever, I'm just here for one night anyways. I have noticed something off about Gumball's voice. I noticed that he wasn't voiced by any of his voice actors throughout the series. He sounded like a YouTuber trying to do the voice for Gumball, but not doing a very good job at it. And yes, I know the current voice for Gumball has a YouTube channel, and I know it wasn't him who voiced Gumball. Anyways, the scene cuts abruptly to the Watersons' house. Richard, who was wearing a black suit and tie, sighs sadly and slumps down onto the sofa. He holds a framed picture of Gumball, Darwin and Anitas, and starts to sob hysterically. The most chilling part, was that Richard's crying sounded like a stock sound effect on YouTube. The reason why I didn't type much of what they said in this scene, was because not much was said. It was just Richard crying, until Nicole came into the living room. She was wearing a black dress and a pretty black hat to match as well. I miss the kids so much. I know Richard. But at least we have said our goodbyes. But they died at a very young age. Nicole then gives Richard a hug, as it cuts to the next scene, which took place days earlier. The scene begins with a view of the school, only it was during the daytime. It then cuts to the parents in Principal Brown's office. How come you called us to come down here Principal Brown? Did Gumball do something stupid again? None of your children did anything wrong Mrs. Watterson. Well how come you called us here? Mr. and Mrs. Watterson, I'm afraid that I have some depressing news about your children. What happened? Darwin and Anna is are reported missing- Are you fucking serious? You better fucking find our goddamn kids you fucking incompetent joke of a fucking principal. If you don't I swear to fucking god, it won't be fucking pretty for you bitch. Settle down Mrs. Watterson. You didn't let me finish. Sorry. I didn't mean to lash out like that. I have a problem with letting my anger get the better of me. I don't blame you because they are missing. But they have been found. But they haven't been found alive. Wha what? Allow me to explain what happened. 
The episode then goes into a flashback of what happened, while Principal Brown was narrating throughout a flashback. It happened around lunchtime when Darwin and Anise ran off and decided to skip school. We went searching for the two of them, but we couldn't find them. So that was when we called the police to have them search for Darwin and Anise. The police found Anise, but they only found her decapitated head in a small box, and her entrails were inside the box too. The police did find a note inside the box, which tells them the location of the rest of Anise's body and Darwin's heavily mutilated corpse. The police went deeper into the forest only to find the rest of Anise's body. Her entrails were strung up on a tree, and her body was covered in a sticky fluid. Oh my god. It seems like the person who murdered Anise also violated her corpse. Darwin looked even worse. His entrails were pulled out of his body, along with his eyes. He looked extremely pale like a zombie. The police are still trying to find the suspect and what his motivation was. I'm deeply sorry for your loss Mr. and Mrs. Watterson. We then see Gumbo walking in the hallway to Principal Brown's office, only to see his parents in said office. That was when Gumball started eavesdropping on his parents' conversation, and he whispered to himself. What the? What are my parents doing here? Are they searching for Darwin and Anais too? Do you know where Gumball is? I know Darwin and Anais are gone, but what about the only child we have left? I had a phone call saying that Gumball is home by himself sick with a stomach bug. That's strange. I thought I saw Gumball on the bus on the way to school. Oh, that's not what happened. Watterson was given detention by Ms. Simeon, and forced him to stay overnight. Seems quite extreme, even for Ms. Simeon. Nicole continued to cry about Darwin and Anaya's being dead, while Richard was trying to comfort her. Did Darwin and Anaya are dead? Where are they? Gumball then ran out of the school and into the forest, and searched for Anaya's and Darwin. Darwin? Anaya's? Where are you? Gumball was still searching for his two siblings, until he found their corpses. Gumball fell onto his knees at the sight of Anaya's and Darwin's corpses, and sobbed harder than I have ever seen him sob in the entire series, which makes sense. I mean, his two siblings got murdered. Gumball then ran back to his school, and went into his classroom. He then started to lie down on the floor in a fetal position while sobbing softly. This went on for about two minutes, without Gumball even saying anything. He was just sobbing. Then Gumball stopped crying, and he began shaking in a fit of rage. He then rushed over to Miss Simeon's desk, and found a knife. Then he started to slit his wrist with the knife, causing his clothing to be covered in his own blood. Gumball realized that cutting himself was not working, and he began to become more angry. He began hyperventilating as he clutched his head, as he screamed real loudly, that I thought the voice actor ended up damaging his or her vocal cords during that scream. Nicole and Richard heard the sounds of Gumball's screams in the classroom. That might be Gumball. I hope my son is alright. The two parents were rushing over to find Miss Simeon's classroom, as Gumball was still searching for something to use to kill himself with, and get a faster result. That was until he found a rope on the floor. Gumball then tied the rope into a noose, and tied it to the ceiling. They, they're gone. My best friend and my little sister are both gone. Darwin? Anise? I'm sorry if I'm hurting you two by doing this, but I don't want to live in a world where you two aren't by my side. Goodbye. As Gumball said goodbye, I chuckled a bit because it made me think of the song Gumball sang, when he didn't want to be Ocho's friend anymore in that episode, The Uncle. Gumball then kicked the desk over, and started choking as he was still holding the knife. He died almost immediately as he dropped the knife. Nicole, Richard, and Principal Brown finally found Miss Simeon's room, as they saw Gumball's lifeless corpse hanging from the ceiling. Nicole and Richard both began sobbing, as Gumball's corpse was swinging slightly. No. Gumball. My own flesh and blood. I'm deeply sorry Mrs. Watterson. Maybe we should have a proper burial. The episode then faded to Richard and Nicole at the kids' funeral, wearing the same black uniform as they did in the earlier part of the episode, and they were both crying their eyes out, as Richard put a bouquet of roses on each of the kids' graves, as they walk away as it fades to black. But as soon as it faded to black, I heard Gumball's scream earlier in the episode, which scared the shit out of me. 
The episode then cuts to the credits, which were like the normal credits from the final series. That was until the emergency alert system played, and that really freaked me out more. But after watching this episode a second time, I actually enjoyed it. Sure Richard was out of character and didn't say much, but I'll excuse it because Richard was possibly still having his character developed. Honestly this episode reminded me of a more adult version of Gumball, which I think is pretty cool. It kind of reminds me of South Park. It may look child friendly, but it has extremely crude humor, like when Nicole cussed out the principal. Anyways, I really enjoyed this episode and I'm glad I faced my fears. Unfortunately, my joy was cut short, when I got a phone call from my brother Larry, saying that there are paramedics at my parents' house. I rushed over there as soon as possible. When I got there, I saw the paramedics pushing both of my parents into an ambulance. I asked what was going on, and one of the paramedics told me that my parents have suddenly stopped breathing, and the neighbors has called the paramedics. I started to freak out because I knew what they did. They probably killed themselves, because they couldn't handle with coping the loss of my younger brother anymore. Even though I got over my fears of the episode itself, I'm still scared of the person who made the episode. Not only did he kill my little brother, he also hijacked the Cartoon Network broadcasting system to air the episode again. So if you do plan on watching Adult Swim at 3am, be on the lookout for the grieving. It's a sign that the person is still out there somewhere, and we want someone to bring that criminal to justice, because who knows where he could be? Maybe he could hijack the broadcasting system again, and air it on your TV next time. If he does air it on your TV, I want you to record it on your DVR. Record a video of the episode, and send it to the police, so that it will bring the person who made the episode to justice, because I don't want it to affect anybody, similar to how it affected me.